welcome to the show. It is John Thomas Hill's show. I am John Thomas Hill, and um, glad to join us today. We're going to talk about the future of football right now, <coughs> and um, we're going to rip on that just a bit. Let's uh, cut down the music right fast. Thank you very much. All right. Last week, <coughs> you have to excuse me, I've got a little bit of allergies going on, so I may be coughing a little bit on the, during this. Last week, Andrew Luck, the inter- Indianapolis Colts quarterback, retired suddenly um, and unexpectedly, citing uh, constant pain, and it got me to thinking. There is going to be a major change in the sport of football because of not just the injuries that Andrew Luck has gotten, but other players have gotten that have shortened their careers, that have convinced players to leave um, their um, their careers earlier than expected. There's plenty of examples out there, but I'm not so much worried about that as I'm worried about the fact that here you have one of the best quarterbacks come out of college, someone who is considered a once-in-a-lifetime quarterback. Now, I think that was over, he was a bit overhyped, to be honest with you. I think he was a very good quarterback coming out of college, one of the best we've seen in a long time, admittedly, but not one of these once-in-a-lifetime. And the truth of the matter is his career never really achieved the height that was given to him. He had a very good career. He may still have a career after this. He may decide in a year or two to come back. Uh, depending on how he feels. But I'm not so much concentrating on that right now as I'm concentrating on the fact that the sport itself is in jeopardy of fading away in the next 20, 30 years. For it maybe even longer than that, maybe even shorter than that. And here's why I think why I think that. First of all, You look at the concussion issue, and not just from the pro football aspect, but you go further down to college, to high school, to middle school, to pop, or PB, whatever you have, want to call it, that level. The truth of the matter is, is that parents read about these concussions. They've seen the the PBS Frontline Report about Concussion. They've seen the Will Smith movie. They've heard about this. They've read it because they they care about their children, obviously. They want what's best for them. And more and more parents are, in my opinion, looking at football and going, do I want my child to play that sport, running the risk of getting concussions early in life and later in life, that impacting his life? Now... We're smart enough to know that, smart enough to at, at least smart enough to know that quarterbacks can, I mean, f- football players, I should say, can better be better protected. A lot of this is not going to be easy. A lot of this means you're going to have to change the technique of players being tackled. I mean, that means a so called quote unquote weakening of the game. But the truth of the matter is, it has to happen or else there won't be a game one day. Nobody will be wanting to play the game. Or those who do play are not going to have the talent to that players today. And let's face it, if you say, well, football is never going to die in America, think about this. Once upon a time, baseball was by far the national pastime. Nowadays, It could be argued that it's third behind basketball, both college and pro, and football, both college and pro. Now, I'm not saying it's going to completely die out, but think about this. If you're a parent and your your son wants to play football, What if he decides, hey, 
I don't want to get these concussions. I'll play soccer. Here's a problem with that. There's going to be a real case to change soccer. But the, soccer can be changed by simply eliminating the header. If you eliminate the header, you can solve a lot of concussion problems and just make it to where you can only you know, use your lower body to, use the, to play the ball. Our football is a lot different. Hockey, of course, is going to have to deal with their, their situation. They're going to have to really look at that sport as well because there's a lot, a lot of violence in there. We love big hits. I, you know, I, I, I will admit that I like a big hit like anybody, any other great football fan. But once upon a time, being a wrestling fan myself, I liked the chair shot to the head. <laughs> not realizing that, yeah, that's not exactly the smartest thing in the world either. So, in my opinion, the game has to change. Now, how does it change? First of all, it has to change at the lowest levels to teach better tact tackling technique to get away from helmet to helmet, helmet to helmet collisions as much as possible. Secondly, we have to look at the real possibility that maybe the helmets are the problem. And if you change the equipment, maybe having a smaller helmet, maybe realizing that, a, say, a hockey helmet or no helmet at all, may make players less wary of leading with their heads to tackle leading more with their shoulders. It's going to take time. It's going to take getting people together who are football experts, football coaches, former football players, football administrators, what have you, to make this happen. It ain't going to be easy. Secondly, enforcing the rules when it comes to rules like targeting and such. Not just on the high school and college, but also the pro level as well. Here's the thing. Football is a pass-happy sport these days. There's no doubt about that. That means the quarterback, protecting the quarterback is the utmost importance. It also means that, hey, if you're willing to sacrifice a player in 15 yards... Maybe you take out the quarterback. The player gets thrown out. You get a 15-yard penalty, but you take out the quarterback. That is a concern of mine. Especially now that you've got so much money going into the NFL and the fact that, that, that let's face it, fans love Passing game, the long passing game. They love seeing the, pat the long touchdown passes and whatnot, the great catches and such. So in the last, I'd say, 20 years, the quarterback position has become more and more valuable. Not to say the running game has completely dis disappeared, obviously, but I think it's safe to say that from the perspective of of, uh, of a football fan who's been a football fan since the early 80s, you know, passing has become more and more prevalent in this century than the last century. It's more important because people want more scoring. They want to see more action. They don't want to see a handoff necessarily up through the middle. So that means the quarterback is more and more important in the grand scheme of things. And that means defense, defensive coordinators are tempted to go, <coughs> maybe we take out the quarterback. Especially on the pro level when you've got a lot of money on the line. You've got a lot of pressure on the line. It could happen. It may very well be happening. So how do we change the game to make it safer? Besides what I've ex already explored. I think first of all, you have to impose significant penalties when somebody is 
taking, you know, in, purposely injuring a player. I would say not just kick out the player, but a 25-yard penalty for intentionally injuring a player. Now, that would re require review, a video review, and consultation, I guess, with the NFL office or the commissioner's office, whatever you want to call it, in the college game. But I think it's important that we do what we can to improve the the, better, the chances of players coming onto the field and going off the field as healthy as they possibly can. Look, if, in, if you're in a workplace, and, and the workplace I'm in, they preach safety all the time. They want you to come, leave just as good as you came in. Okay? They're always preaching about safety. And I think the same has to be done in all pro sports, as well as colleges and high schools. And that means tackling in a safe manner. That means teaching players better. Coaches teaching players better te te tackling techniques and having a, I guess you can say, a attitude that, hey, we can't allow um, this to go on. Now, now I'm going to go on and do some other stuff uh, here right now because I've, I've kind of wandered a little bit on topic. I just saw a commercial for the ACC Network from ESPN. And here we go. All right. We are in an era of so many network cable networks, it makes Bruce Springsteen's old song back in, I guess the late 80s, 57, 47, whatever amount of channels and nothing on. Well, that's conservative compared to what we have today. We've got 500 channels and nothing on. And now we have the ACC network. Now, I'm, I'm old enough to remember back in the 80s when you didn't have that many cable channels. Network television still mattered. And for those of us down here in the South, you know, especially North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, parts of Georgia, I guess, parts of Tennessee, Maryland, Raycom Sports pre presentation of college basketball syndicated throughout the Carolinas, the Mid-Atlantic region, what, what have you, was a very big deal. You know, it could be... Some, uh, a game between two teams that really suck. <laughs> um, and you still watched. Nowadays, you're going to have so much coverage of college sports that it kind of minimizes all of it. I mean, the truth of the matter is, you've got so much out there right now that, you know, it's, it's hard to believe that in the last 20 years, we've gotten two Fox Sports channels, the SEC Network, ACC Network, uh, ESPNU. So, and then you go on the regional networks and such, and I'll get back to that in a minute. But the ACC Network... Is it going to be as successful as the SEC network, or is it going to face the fate that the Pac-12 network has, which is that the, you know, the Pac-12 network, yeah, they've got content, but nobody's watching it. Will people want to watch all this content? Will they want to watch a women's soccer game on a Sunday afternoon when there is pro football on next, next week? Will they want to watch a women's basketball game when there's an NBA game on ABC or ESPN or Turner Network television. Um, and I'm going to get to TNT in just a moment for, for something else. But my biggest concern is all these conferences are having their networks. you got the Big Ten Network, the ACC Network, SEC Network, Pac-12 Network. What's next, the Big 12 Network? Or they got, well, they got Texas with their own uh, sports network, 
hard to believe a, a university has its own sports network, and they've really not done a whole lot national championship-wise lately. So I figure eventually, say in the next few years, that the Longhorn Network is going to get spun off into the Big 12 Network. And they'll pay Texas a lot of money for the right to, to spin that off into the Big 12 Network. Whether that happens or not, we'll see, but I have a feeling that may very well happen. Now, what that means is more money for these big power conferences and more stratification, for, which means one day I think you're going to see a Premier League version of the NCAA where the, the other five conferences, uh, the group of five conferences, whatever they call them, are basically going to be a new version of Division One AA. <laughs> And, you know, to me, I have a feeling, and, I, and I've, I've said this before, I think the, the, the day is coming when the NCAA is going to have these big conferences break away from the NCAA and go their own route. I mean, what, what legal binding contract could they have to keep these conferences and their universities in the NCAA? You know, they could decide one day to go, you know what? Screw this. We're leaving. The Big 12's leaving. The ACC's leaving. The SEC's leaving. The Big 10's leaving. The Pac-12's leaving. We'll all go do our own thing. And we'll have our own conference. Y'all can go do your own thing. And that's going to change the whole thing fundamentally. I, I, I really think the NCAA has to really look at themselves and go... Do we want to fight this fight? Do we want to try and keep this very strict code of amateurism, knowing that we have five powerful conferences that could decide tomorrow <coughs> to bolt and say, okay, we're going to pay our players. We're going to have our own college championships and whatnot in basketball and baseball and whatnot, and there's nothing you can do about it. What are you going to do? So here we go. All right, let me get to the regional sports networks here for just a minute. Um, because of the Walt Disney deal with Fo getting Fox, well, pretty much all of Fox except Fox Network, primary, Fox Sports 1 and 2, and Fox News and Fox Business Channel, Disney had to divest themselves of Fox regional networks. Now, according to reports, Sinclair Broadcasting, the conservative, right-wing, leaning broadcaster, is going to buy these regional networks up, which makes me wonder, is Sinclair going to go after Fox News? Think about it. They've already got a lot of they're one of the largest owners of t t TV stations across the country. They're about to have a ton of regional sports networks. They could very well decide to try and make a bid for, say, an HLN or True TV if Turner decides to get rid of one of those. Um, they could go after FX if Disney wants to sell that. Or FXM or FXX. And say, okay, we're going to go after those net, you know, try and get a, a channel that we can build a, a network base. That is what I think Sinclair may be going after is down the road... Fox is starting to alienate Trump a little bit. Maybe the Rupert Murdoch-Donald Trump relationship isn't as well as we'd like. Which means, in my opinion, we could very well see Sinclair launch their own news network. Think it can happen? There's already Newsmax. There was NRA TV. I think it's gone away now. Um... And 
there's there's obviously online stuff. But here's the thing. Sinclair is powerful enough to where they can get the kind of deal they want to get a news network operation up and running on a direct TV, on a dish network, on your local cable system, Comcast, Charter, whatever. And they could do it pretty pretty soon, I'd say within at least a year. And my feeling is if the disaffection between Donald Trump and Fox News continues, which it could very well do that, you could see Sinclair making a play for a cable news network of their own and going after Fox News for the hard right audience. Much like MSNBC has gone after CNN for the left wing audience. CNN's purportedly straight down the middle, but some of their programming tends to be more opinion. And let me let me stri- go off on this topic a little bit. I know I'm going all over the place, but bear with me. Once upon a time, you could watch CNN 20-some-odd years ago. And you knew you could get a straight news report. You could find out everything you wanted to know about what was going on in the world at that time. When breaking news actually happened, it actually mattered. Now every day is breaking news. If the president burps after eating a burrito, that's breaking news. Okay? I think it's important for us to understand that media has changed so much in the last 25 years from what it was before. CNN up until the, I guess the Clinton investigation, the Lewinsky scandal, whatever you want to call it, it was a great network. And then the Lewinsky scandal came along and all hell broke loose. 21 years ago when that thing, that fiasco started. We all remember that, if you're all of a certain age. And it was walled wall everything. And it was right after, four years after, or five, excuse me, three years after the O.J. Simpson trial. And I believe firmly that the O.J. Simpson trial and the... Uh, Lewinsky scandal fundamentally changed media forever. And it changed it in a bad way. It meant that straight news where you got reports about what was going on in the White House and in Russia and in the UK and this war in Afghanistan and this war in Africa and this war in Latin America... You know, do yourself a favor. Go onto YouTube and look at CNN from, say, 1993 back. Try and find news clips from back then. What you're going to find is that the news back then on CNN was a traditional newscast. You didn't have all these talking heads. You didn't have all the discussions constantly about um, who's who's doing this, who's doing... And, and, you know, to me, and I'm old enough to remember when CNN really, really was the network you went to. 30 years ago, when... Hurricane Hugo was coming through. When the earthquake hit San Francisco, when the Berlin Wall fell. I'm old enough to remember that stuff. That's where you went to for all this breaking news coverage. And from 89 to 91, 92, that was their heyday. They had the um, lead up to the Gulf War, presented great coverage during the Gulf War. 
You knew you could you knew you could count on CNN. Now if there's a breaking news, it's they're all over the place. <coughs> they're constantly talking heads, they're they're and it, it's just it gets to the point where you just you're you are you are not it's not so much about the news anymore, it's a talk show. It's like Here's a topic. Let's throw this out there. Whoever we can get to come in to talk about it. And Fox is guilty of this. MSNBC is guilty of this. It's no longer news. It's televised talk radio. Except they don't take calls. And all of a sudden, you know, how do you differentiate between real news and so-called fake news? That, you know, because right now you could have a topic about the president's lying and they could go off and instead of actually doing a critical analysis of his statements and prove, proving that he's lying... You've got two people you're arguing with one another in, about these things because that's about ratings. It's not about the journalism anymore. It's about ratings. Okay. <laughs> I really am going all over the place here, so I've, I'm just doing this riffing off on it. So here's the thing. Future football. We've got to do something about concussions. We've got to do something about helping players be less susceptible to injury on the television sports of the future. We could see a lot. I could go off on that. but uh, And, of course, politic, politics, it's all a mess. So that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Went all over the place, but it is what it is. Take it easy. Bye-bye. <laughs>